Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm diving back into my old favorite Aurora HDR. I'm overdue. I have not used this product in uh, quite a while, primarily because I don't edit a lot in HDR. But I took some brackets on my recent trip up to New England and I've been kind of playing around. And while the photo that um, I've got in today's tutorial is not from that trip, um, it's caused me to want to jump back into my library because I've, I've been shooting brackets for I mean, years, year. That's all I did for the first eight or nine years of my photography, uh, you know, life. So, um, I, you know, I was kind of curious. Uh, last time I spoke to the uh, the folks at Skyloom, obviously they're very focused on Luminar AI, which, as you know, I I, I love and I use all the time. Um, but I asked them about Aurora HDR, and they, and they said, you know, we don't feel because it hadn't been updated in a while, like a, a year, two years, maybe. I don't know. It hasn't had any upgrades. Um, and I was like, you know, are you going to do anything with this thing? It's just kind of sitting there. And they said, you know, I don't think we need to. Um, it's still a good product. And, you know, compared to the other HDR products out there, it holds its own. And I was like, okay, well, I just wanted to jump back in and take a look at it because it's been a while. So that's what I'm doing today. And I want to figure out, is it still kind of worth using in 2021? Let's take a look. I've got a three exposure bracket here. Um, this is back when I used to shoot like seven exposure brackets, so I just chose three of them. Uh, but they are raw files. You can see it's a zero, a plus one, and a plus two. These were shot in the Guinness Brewery in Dublin. One of the things that uh, Skylum is focused on is AI technology. And what I realized when I started looking back at Aurora is this quantum HDR engine, they say on their website, is powered by HDR, uh, excuse me, powered by AI. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So uh, they've been using and doing things with... Um, AI for quite a while now, even going back to your Aurora HDR product. So here's the photo. Let me close the preset window. Now there's my base photo. And one of the things, uh, you know, I've got a different eye now than I used to have. And that eye tells me the first thing I notice now on photos like this is, God, the verticals are so screwed up. I used to not really think about that. I shot with a wide angle all the time, and I guess I was just used to it. And admittedly, I probably didn't know how to fix it back then. But you can do that in Aurora. It's kind of handy. So you click on there. I'm going to come into vertical and I'm just going to basically shift this thing to where it's uh, straighter. Now that does cause me to lose stuff on the bottom and the sides, but I'm going to use the scale slider and I'm not even going to have to crop this photo. I'm just going to scale it like that. And there you go. I've got the main components of the photo right there, which is what I wanted, which is that arrow leading in, the lines being straight uh, around the waterfall, the stairs being straight, the post in the background being straight. Honestly, that, that just looks fantastic. So if you do the before and after, that's one of the uh, brackets, uh, you know, one of the exposures from the bracket set. And there it is now. So I've reshaped the photo, if you will, in terms of the verticals. And it's applied HDR. It's blended the exposures. Like the water looks great. It's a well-lit scene. And scenes like this, I think, just scream for HDR because it's interior. It's got a little bit of gr uh, kind of grunge and grit, you know, because I've got like a concrete floor. I've got a brick wall. I've got wood and pipe uh, and iron, steel, whatever it is, all across the ceiling. It just screams HDR. So uh, when I was looking at these, I was like, ooh, that's a perfect one to like dive back into Aurora with just because it's fun. So here I am. Now, one of the things I want to do is I'm actually going to get into my presets. And that's the other thing this has caused me to do is go back and look at my presets. So if I show you, I used to sell two different preset packs for Aurora HDR on my website. And then I quit selling them. I turn it off. And I've had actually recently a couple of people email me and say, hey, where are those presets? Don't you sell them anymore? And I turned it off because I made the presets like two versions ago, like in Aurora 2017 or 2018. And then uh, this was, I think this is a Roar 2019, which is the most recent version. Again, a couple years old, but the presets work great. And so I went ahead and I redid things in my uh, website. So if you just go to gymnix.com, and then if you just click on shop, that'll take you to my store. And I've got my two preset packs here. So I apologize, a bit of a commercial interruption, shameless plug, but Bella Italia preset pack and my Road Tripper preset pack, both for Roar HDR. Bella Italia has 25 presets for 10 bucks. Road Tripper has 20 presets, also $10. I've got those both loaded in here. They work great. I'm in Bella Italia. And I'm going to go through and just click on a few of these because some of these look cool, i got to admit. Again, slightly biased. I made the presets. But some of these look pretty awesome. This back in black. <laughs> that looks awesome, I think. 
this scene looks just screams uh, awesome, I think, in black and white, but it needs to be a little brighter. You can do that easy with the controls over here on the right that I'll get into. I think Dark Alleys looks cool. I think this looks pretty awesome. This historic landmarks, nice balance kind of look. Lago de Como, bit of color pop. I think that looks pretty sweet. Uh, I think this Milano Centrale, my pronunciation of Italian is probably pretty terrible, but that looks pretty good. Knights in Rome looks pretty good. I'm just kind of going through and trying to figure out what I want to use. Painted ceilings looks pretty nice. Um, I like that. Um, anyway, ooh, this Twilight Calling. Yeah, it's a little too, uh, too Twilighty sunset. I'm actually going to go back to this Aqua Alta and apply that preset. It's kind of a uh, desaturated, kind of grungy look. And you can see over here, any of these filters that are in yellow have been used in this preset. So when I do presets, I tend to do them with a lot of stuff. I don't just do a minor thing here or there. They're kind of big moves. You can always adjust the opacity if you want to. So I'm going to come in here and make a few more changes. I think I'm going to add some contrast, maybe brighten it just a tad, pull down the highlights a little bit. And I'm going to go into this HDR Enhance, that HDR Clarity. I'm going to move that up and HDR Smart Structure. I'm going to move that up too because like I said, this kind of scene to me, it just kind of screams gritty, grunge. Uh, and for me, that's basically let's pop these sliders in the HDR Enhance tool. They just work so well, and I think they work really well on a scene like this. And yet, you know, the water still looks nice and smooth and, and kind of yummy. The other thing that's really cool, and this is fairly modern, this is um, the first app I remember seeing and certainly the first app I ever used them in, but that's LUT. So they have this LUT mapping tool. In Luminar, it's called the Mood tool, but it's the same thing. You can go in and choose LUTs. Well, I'm going to load a custom LUT file. I've also got some LUTs I've been building. Uh, sorry, this is kind of another commercial. I'm going to put this LUT pack for sale um, on my blog maybe in a month or so. If you want, by the way, on my blog, on the home page, there's a section here where you can sign up to subscribe to my newsletter. Shameless plug, if you'd like to find out about new product announcements, feel free to do that. If not, that's cool. Just check out the video. I'm happy with that as well. Anyway, I'm going to use my Iceland. Uh, it's a .cube file, which is a LUT file. I'm going to go ahead and click Open. You can see that applies a pretty strong look, but it's defaulting to 100. The cool thing is you can go to 200, so you can kind of really go over the top. I don't want to do that. I want to kind of a light touch. That's what it looked like uh, before the LUT, so that's at zero. I'm going to go a little bit more than that, so I think maybe about a 50. I think that looks pretty good. Gives it a nice little bit of color, and if I turn this off, there's the image before the LUT. And there it is with. So this image now has one of my presets and one of my LUTs. Again, I'm a little bit of a shameless plug. I don't really intend it that way. It's just what I ended up doing with the photo and liking it. But I've got that. And now that I've got it, I'm going to go back to HDR Basic. I think I'm going to bump up Smart Tone, which I think is a really powerful tool. And I consider this kind of a precursor uh, tool to what is now called Accent AI over in Luminar. They're not really the same. This is really just tones, whereas Accent AI seems to do more, but Smart Tone's really just brilliant. It'll help you brighten the dark stuff without brightening the stuff that's already bright. I love that. So I wanted to brighten the photo a little bit. I think I was at like 10 before, something that, down around that range, and I, I, I'm ending up like around 40 or 50. I think around 50 looks pretty good. I don't want to go too bright. I kind of want, actually, I'm going to go a little bit higher than 50. I'm going to maybe go... Uh, maybe high uh, 60s, maybe low 70s, something like that. Um, you can see that I don't have a specific plan for this photo. I just have a general idea. I wanted it to be moody and dark, but not too dark. I like the way the LUT applied. I like the way the preset applied. I like uh, creating a little bit of grunge, which is that HDR Enhance uh, group of sliders here that you saw me do as well. Um, and I feel like I've got a photo looking pretty good. There's a couple of other things that I think are really fun here. One is the glow tool. And you can see when I drag this glow, that's going to pop those brighter parts. So it's really bring it up, especially in that waterfall. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. I'm going to go just a little bit there to kind of pop that. Um, and of course, there's a vignette. The vignette's already been applied. That was part of my preset. If I turn that off, that's before the vignette. And that's with it. But I actually want to get more vignette. I want to heavier kind of look, maybe something a little bit more like that. You can see there were people walking by, and honestly, this is right as you enter the brewery. It's difficult to get it um, empty, and so I waited and waited, and I finally gave up. So I just took the brackets, knowing that these people were walking through. So they kind of ghosted, which is fine with me. I don't mind that, but um, that's another reason why I'm darkening it, because I don't want to get too distracted by that. 
Um, otherwise, I got a clean scene, which I was pretty happy with. So I like the vignette. Um, and then there's color toning, which is basically split toning. I don't need it here, but I think, um, actually, you know what I might do? I might do a little bit of blue into the shadows. I just kind of like that. Let me see. That's kind of a bluish gray. Maybe something about like that. If you go too high, I get really blue. I don't want that, but I'm just adding a little bit more color to it, even though my LUT filter, let me show you what LUT did to it. There it is before the LUT, which I actually like that quite a bit as well. And then after the LUT, it's a little bit darker, a little bit moodier, a little bit of a color shift. Uh, but then color toning, I came in and put a little bit of blue into the shadows. So there you are before that. And then when I add that back, there you are now. I just like the blue a little bit. Um, but that's my full edit, my friends. That's a walkthrough of some different things that you can do in Aurora HDR. And obviously, I'd like to answer the question that I posed at the beginning of the video, which is, does it still hold its own in 2021? Um, and is it still kind of worth doing? Um, I think it is. I like it. I actually agree with them. It's still a great product. It merges raw files beautifully. You can align them if, if they weren't shot on a tripod, which I did that kind of coming in, but I did shoot this on a tripod. You've got amazing control over light, color, detail. You get the ability to add LUTs. You can do split toning. You've got dodge and burn if you need it. Um, you've got layers. I didn't even get into layers over here, but I can click in here and I can add a new adjustment layer or a new image layer, um, or I can add back one of the original um, images if I wanted to mask that in. So then you can use masking tools to be specific and detailed. And then of course you have all this vertical, well transform they call it, but the vertical corrections that I did come in really powerful, super helpful, and super handy. Also right next to the transform tool, you have lens correction as well. So there's so many tools that are in here that again, I've just kind of gotten away from HDR. So I haven't been using Aurora HDR but it's great for single exposures as well. You can get an amazing pop out of a photo. And of course, it's great with brackets. That's what it's designed for. So yeah, I think it holds up. I think it's still a great product in 2021. And I'm kind of rejuvenated. I'm kind of having fun over here, just playing around with all these brackets. I mean, I have thousands and thousands of photos from all these trips that I took over the last 10 or 12 years where I just took tons of brackets. I don't shoot them as much anymore but I might start shooting them again. They're kind of fun, I gotta admit. So anyway, that was it. I wanted to edit this image, walk through a few things, share some thoughts, and uh, just share that workflow. So hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon, and adios.